instead of the path of least resistance, I started choosing the path of most resistance to prepare myself for the journey that was coming my way. And you realize through hard work, you can outwork anybody. No matter how badass they are. It starts with yourself, man. You gotta start diving into those things that you are afraid of. You don't gain confidence by going to the spot that makes you feel good. It's gonna be a false reality. And the second life gives you that challenge, all you wanna do is go back to what gave you confidence, is that happy spot. No, what gave me confidence was spending years at a kitchen table trying to learn how to read and write on my own, realizing I can't learn the way you learn. I can't, but I can learn. What gives you confidence not being afraid is overcoming the fear. That's what gives me confidence, is facing these things, overcoming them. And maybe not overcoming them every day, but facing them, and facing them, and facing them. Pretty soon like this, you know what, man, this is where it's at. It's not in that comfort zone. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. Mm -hmm. That's where it's getting built. Happiness, peace, enlightenment, it's all up here, man. It's all up here. It's yeah. all up here. You just gotta be willing to go and face it. And that's the hard part. The physical standard is not what they need to meet. It's a mental standard you must meet in life. That's how I live my life. I now know that there is no cap on the human mind. There's no cap. We cap it ourselves. The most people quit. I had just started. And when you take that mindset and you learn to flip that around, that's what made me powerful. And my body followed. And so I said, I want to do this. I'm going to give myself a challenge every single day until the fear goes away. That's right. And I feel like that's what more of us should be doing. I'm hearing that that's what you, how you live your life. That's all it is, man. And it helps me feel so much more confident. When you overcome that fear yep. of saying, this doesn't have control over me anymore. That's right. It's like, you can be at so much more peace. A lot of us speak in hollow words. I used to speak in hollow words. I don't do it anymore. Everything that comes out of my mouth has substance. It's real. We all have these feelings in our bodies, in our minds, in our souls. I act on mine. A lot of us who are afraid of something, we allow our minds to choose the path of least resistance so we go a different route. And I'm afraid of something that's telling me you must, you must do that. Life is one big mind game. And you're playing it with yourself. You cannot lose perspective of where you've come in life. I'm trying to give people a different thought process of life where failure, hell, disappointment, discomfort is a great learning tool. And many people don't understand that, but it's these few moments in life that you have. Like for me, I always talk about it. Rocky won round 14. That one two minute and 13 second clip of Rocky getting up when Apollo knocked him down. That one clip, when I was going through a very bad time in my life, I saw what I wanted to be. And it wasn't a guy that won. It wasn't a guy that won everything he did. It was a guy that kept getting up after being knocked down. So I realized if that two minutes and 13 seconds changed my life, it's all it was. I saw something that I needed to be in the world I was living in. Maybe my story will give someone the two minutes and 13 seconds they need to change their life. Everybody's got a story. We don't share it on social media. We share our nice life on social media. We, have, we all have a dungeon. I'm just willing to talk about mine. Mental toughness isn't something that you sample. It's something that you live in every day. 
Whenever hardness comes, and you don't know what it is, it may be different for you than it is for me, but you go back to your insecurities. And then when you go back to your insecurities, you then look for comfort within those insecurities. And we all look for that cookie that your mom used to give you when you were sad, when you were sick. We look for our wife or our husband. We look for comfort. It's in those moments you must retrain your mind to think differently in health. The mental standard is you must know how far you've come. I walk in a room now and I know the hours and years and decades I put into David Goggins. That's something, it's not on the wall. It's not a trophy on the wall. It's not a medal on your neck. I don't care how you perceive David Goggins because through my journey, I figured out the one piece I was missing. I thought it was cars. I thought it was women. I thought it was money. I thought it was everything. The one piece I was missing was me having the courage to face myself. Where I got my work ethic from was the hours I had to spend learning this. When you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, yeah. and you still want to be at the top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. When I realized that I can learn, do hard work, and I can beat the valedictorian in school, but I got put in 10 hours more a day than he does. You know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down, that guy, that, that valedictorian study for an hour, and you know I caught you. I have the work ethic to catch you. That's where David Goggins got really invented. Yeah. Was at a kitchen table with 20 spiral notebooks that were empty. And then they were full. And when you can go through that, I still have them in my storage unit. You go through these spiral notebooks of your life and you realize this is how I learned. This is unbelievable. It wasn't until I got real sick and my life got real quiet. I, I went from running 205 miles in 39 hours to I couldn't get out of bed. My life was taken from me. And that's wow. when I realized I hadn't taken time to think about what I'd done in my life. I'd done all these things, but there was no finish line. I finished the race of life, and I wouldn't even receive my medal. I'd go on. <laughs> I'd get in the car and I'd go. When I started figuring out life, that I was, I was leaving so much in the tank, once I realized, my God, man, I was this dumb, fat kid being bullied, and now I'm a 180 pound person, lost 106 pounds in less than three months. Learn to read, learn to do this, learn to do that. I was like, I need more. I was fueling my mind with everything. And I never took time to say, my God, you came from this hell, and you're here. I had come 8,000 miles from where I started. But if you never know that, you're still in a $7 a month place. So it's that quiet place. It's that place by yourself. It's those hours and years and decades by yourself in the grip of life. When life has you by the throat and choking you out and you're sitting there calm because you're trying to figure it out. You're not panicking. You're not quitting. You're not throwing in the towel. You're saying there's a way around this. And when you figure it out, when life has you gripped in a vice, and you can figure that out, that's when you overcome. That's when you overcome. The journey getting there was harder than going through it. Yeah. You know? So that's the whole thing about life, man. It's, it's, it's that journey that, that makes you who you are.